How's it going, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And join me today for my overview of the Batman Spawn, the deluxe edition hardcover from DC Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back, everybody. So what we have here is the latest deluxe edition hardcover of Batman and of Spawn. And I mentioned that this book was being published by DC Comics. Even though the image logo is there, it's still, it was in the DC catalog, it was in the DC solicitations, just like the previous standard size hardcover. And speaking of standard size and deluxe edition, this is a deluxe oversized hardcover, meaning it's the height of an omnibus or a deluxe edition. As a matter of fact, we're going to do a little size comparison here. So here we have a DC Deluxe Edition, a Batman Deluxe Edition, and a Spawn Origins Collection Deluxe Edition from Image Comics. So here's what they look like together, and then the spines of the book. So they are the same height. However, if you notice, the Image Deluxe hardcover has a flat spine, whereas the ones published by DC have a round spine and we'll look at the binding here in a little bit but i did want to do a comparison here to the image and dc and i guess really it depends on who you are a bigger fan of where you keep the book you can keep it with your batman hardcovers or your spawn hardcovers or maybe the crossover hardcovers if you have any of those but let's bring back the focus to this collection here. So here we have a brand new cover by Greg Capullo, inked by Todd McFarlane. And yes, it is a take on The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller, but also a take on the original Batman Spawn, or rather Spawn Batman crossover from the 90s. Todd McFarlane, Greg Capullo, Batman Spawn, the deluxe edition, and... Batman Spawn, Deluxe Edition, McFarlane Capullo, and the DC logo down there. You do have the Image logo up here. Oh, and the Spawn and Batman logo there. And then the back of the book. Born from tragedy, driven by vengeance, two Dark Knights have returned. Their logo's here, the book retailing for $29.99. And this collects three different issues um, here, let's look at it underneath the dust jacket, which is another image by Greg Capullo. And you can see that there's still a spine with the Batman logo and the Spawn logo. And the words Batman Spawn, the deluxe edition right there. So we're going to crack this open, look at the content in here, talk about what's collected, then look at the build. Um, I guess minor spoilers going in if you don't want to know anything about this at all. If you don't want to know how these two characters got together. I don't know if reading it would, <laughs> would help you find out how they even got together to begin with, but hey, you know, mileage may vary. Let's look at this beautiful artwork, though. Okay, let's go ahead and crack this open. So we have, I oh, love this. This is some nice end paper. This is a sketch of, I'm sure, what was going to be a frame and what will be penciled later on, inked, colored, but I love this stuff which you're going to see a lot of here in this book. Batman Spawn, the Deluxe Edition, including this. I believe there's a variant cover because issue number one has Batman standing on top of Spawn. And here we have the credits. Todd McFarlane, Frank Miller, Doug Mensch, Chuck Dixon, and Alan Grant are the writers. Greg Capullo, Todd McFarlane, Klaus Jansen, Jonathan Glapion are the artists. And then you have the colorist, the letters, the cover artist, and then Batman created by Bill Finger and Bob Kane, Spawn created by Todd McFarlane. So yes, it is Batman standing over Spawn. So this collects three different one-shots. Uh, in 1994, we have the original one-shot of Batman Spawn War Devil, and then you have the Spawn Batman, and I'll talk a little bit about each one of those. But this leads in with 2022's Batman Spawn one-shot. Apparently there was supposed to be a 2008 crossover between Batman and Spawn, which I didn't find out until opening up this book. All right, so you have a cover. It's textless, but on the back you do have the credits. Batman Spawn, Todd McFarlane, Greg Capullo, Dave McKaig, and Tom 
Napolitano is the letterer. Jonathan Glapion is the ink assist here. So this is the 2022 one shot that came out late last year and it was not included in the standard size hardcover. Uh, by the way, if you want to check out that video, I'll leave the link above. Now, this is another meaning of these two characters. This is all written by Todd McFarlane. And it really feels like Todd McFarlane writing this. Because this feels more like a Spawn type of story. And both of these characters are connected by one specific date. Batman is mourning the loss of his parents. Mainly his mother, Martha. And it is June 26. But that date is also important for Al Simmons, Spawn. And they're being manipulated by what seems like is the Court of Owls. To fight each other. Because Spawn thinks that Batman is holding something. I'm not going to go into detail as to what Batman is exactly holding from Spawn. But Spawn wants it back. And it all has to do with the June 26th date. So again, both of these characters are being manipulated by what I assume is the Court of Owls. But then you find out a little bit more. And it leaves it open... For another crossover. Now, do they at all acknowledge the fact that they have met? Yeah, but here and there they say, hey, wait, you look a little bit familiar, or that sounds familiar, things like that. But they don't really acknowledge the fact that both of these characters have met in the past. And I find it interesting that they're kicking it off with a 2022 book, because then we get, let me actually, yeah, right here, the Batman Spawn one shot. So this one is the one that's written by Doug Minch, Chuck Dixon, and Alan Grant. Uh, you have Klaus Jansen being the artist, including some of the colors, but Steve Buscellato doing a lot of the other colors. And then Todd Klein. And I've talked about this one before whenever doing the overview of the um, standard size hardcover. By the way, on the opposite page of this, I can't reveal because it's the ending of the Batman. Actually, no, let's just... I forgot I can censor out pages. But anyway, this is the classic collection cover. This is the one that came out in the standard size hardcover. So you're not missing anything. All right, let's go back to this. So this right here is a mystery story written by three people, and it kind of actually works pretty well. And Klaus Jansen, of course, being the gentleman that drew Daredevil during the Frank Miller era. So all, all these uh, writers at the time were writing Batman. You had um, Al... Alan Grant on Legends of the Dark Knight. Chuck Dixon was writing Night's End. And then he became, of course, the writer on Batman. And then Robin and Nightwing and Birds of Prey. And then you also had Doug Minch, who was also writing Batman. I think he was writing Shadows of the Bat at the time, or Shadow of the Bat. But this particular story is a mystery. It's all about the work. Here we go. The word... Croatoan, who of course we've seen before in history books with the disappearance of Roanoke and it was the last word that was left there. This time around though, it turns out 400 years later, the descendant of Virginia Dare was born and she was the, the first British woman to be born in America and she was born on that island of Roanoke and now her descendant, Virgil Dare, and is in Gotham and all of this will take place in Gotham and he's trying to unleash hell in Gotham trying to resurrect uh, a couple of demons so there's another character here that plays an important part and his name is Simon Vesper so he's the one that owns the building which is the exact same spot where the word Croatoan appeared in blood on a tree after the disappearance of the villagers of Roanoke so it seems like all these stories are connected and out of nowhere, of course, Spawn comes and investigates because he is a hell spawn. So he's got ties to demons. So the, like I said, this one reads like a mystery. It's all drawn by Klaus Jansen. There is some fighting and this one actually has a bigger villain that both Batman and Spawn have to fight. Whereas the first story and the second story, it's really them practically just beat the crap out of each other because well in one story they're being manipulated in the other story it's frank miller so let's talk about that and here it is spawn batman and again this cover right here a take on that cover and that is also a take on the return of the dark knight or the dark knight Returns. sorry 
But this is written by Frank Miller, and the art here is Todd McFarlane. So that's really nice to see Todd McFarlane actually drawing, inking his own pencils. He got to ink the first story. It's all drawn by Greg Capullo, and he does the inks there with, of course, a little bit of help. Steve O'Lift doing the colors here. And the most important thing I got from here was the Spawn Batman is a companion piece to DC's comics Batman The Dark Knight Returns. It does not represent current DC continuity. And I think when you read this, it's understood, so I'm not sure why they needed to put that there. I... I I guess maybe people were confused that this really took place in DC continuity. But no, no. This this is the Dark Knight era of Frank Miller's Batman. Sometimes um, it's really difficult to talk about these books without going into spoilers and without putting my thoughts and feelings into uh, these overviews. Because I, I like people to make up their own mind and to judge for themselves. I want people to read these stories for themselves. Hell, you could be the biggest... Batman fan or Spawn fan, and you love this. Uh, so let me just give you the quick premise. that This is pretty much Batman is guarding Gotham City at one night, just like he does. He goes on night patrol, and he's attacked by this cyborg. And the cyborg is attacking him, but what he doesn't know is that the robot possesses a severed head of a homeless man, uh, who still seems... Like, he's a little bit conscious, and he still feels like he's himself and not part robot. Now, of course, Batman takes this head back, he does a little bit of research, and it finds out that the homeless man came from New York City. And he goes to New York City. He leaves Gotham to go... Look at that. That's why you get this book. The art. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, he goes to Gotham City to investigate. We get some little things here for maybe Frank Miller's universe or maybe Spawn's universe because Tom McFarlane used those same kind of newscasters in his issues of Spawn. But this is where he runs into Spawn because apparently New York City works like a multiverse. Uh, but there really is no explanation of how these two came together and how they encounter each other. But yes, this is where Al Simmons shows up and enters the picture because someone is taking the homeless from his streets and they're creating a cyborg army. So that's what's going on here. Now, I may have lost some people's interest whenever given the premise of this book, but that is the plot. I mean, that's the basic premise. And maybe some people are sitting down going, what the hell? That's it? They're, they're kidnapping homeless people to turn them into cyborgs and these two are fighting? Look. I'm not comparing this to War and Peace. I've mentioned this before. You know, sometimes comics are just fun. Stupid fun. And it's a medium that you can enjoy both the artwork and the story. Sometimes you get both. Sometimes you can enjoy the story and the artwork and you're in comic heaven. And then sometimes you can enjoy the story. And then sometimes you just enjoy the art. And that's what's the beauty of this. And yeah, sometimes you just need goofy fun, people fighting each other. I will say, to this day, I still love the final page of Spawn Batman. I think it's freaking phenomenal. Uh, it, it's goofy and fun, doesn't take itself seriously. And as a matter of fact, it was canon in the Spawn world for a long time until Tom McFarlane decided to just retcon it. But I thought it was a, a cool way to end the story. All right, let's look at the extras. So the back matter is huge. We have a lot. That much of the 280 pages is extras. Pinups, covers, and original art, which we'll look at here in a second. I forgot to mention that there was something from the first story that kind of gave me that uh, Batman Superman feeling from the movie when, why did you say that name? If you've watched the movie, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it kind of cracked me up like that. I don't think it was intentional. All right, so what we're looking at here are variants, and there are a lot of variants by some very talented folks, including Capullo. Uh, there's one from McFarlane himself. Uh, this one here is by Gabriel Delotto. There's a Sean Murphy piece, Franco Martina, and we have Jeffrey Scott Campbell, Brett Booth, Jim Lee, and it's Jim Lee and Scott Williams, and Jim Lee's take on... Spawn is very Frank Miller-ish. Of course, we saw him borrow some of the type of art from Sin City uh, for his work on Deathblow. And here's some by Jorge Jimenez, who I thought that was Jay Lee, honestly. And then a piece by Jason Fabok. Now, we have original pencil art here for Batman Spawn number one. 
as a matter of fact the entire issue is collected in here because keep in mind these were only 48 pages then we get let me just make sure censoring that final page even though it's in pencils doesn't matter don't want to spoil it we get the batman spawn war devil the original uh pages these are inks for pages one through five and then seven through 48 for some reason maybe they lost page six i don't know why but yeah we go from page five to seven so the page that's missing that they couldn't get the original art for is this page right here so that's the page that's missing there is no original page six but the entire book is in here and it's a lot <laughs> and censoring that final page and we get the color guide here by klaus jansen for that war devil cover we get the deluxe edition cover pencils by greg capullo before the mcfarland inks and then this piece right here before the mcfarland inks so here we have the batman spawn cover pencils you have spawn on top of batman batman on top of spawn and then you have the batman spawn cover by jim lee and scott williams it's beautiful this is what i was talking about this is um 2006 so these were unpublished pinup art from Batman Spawn Inner Demons by Greg Capullo and Todd McFarlane. And it was originally supposed to come out in 2006. It's Capullo and McFarlane pinup right there. And then this unpublished pinup by Todd McFarlane. To, this was to promote the original 1994 crossover. And the end paper. Get another thumbnail sketch. Alright, let's take a look at this binding. So at 280 pages, the book is sewn binding, but there's just a lot of excess glue down there. Uh, it is printed in this thick, glossy paper. So it's not the matte paper stock that they've used for the Lux Editions recently, like the, the Batman Deluxe Editions or the Doom Patrol Deluxe Edition. Uh, it is the thick, glossy paper. Let's look at the way that it lays over. It's the way it lays over towards the beginning. There's a little bit of bleed through. Cause, but you're in luck because Spawn and Batman usually hang out in the shadows. So there's really not a lot of whites or light colors for that matter. Not until you get to the extras where you can see the art bleeding through from the opposite page. And oh, I love the fact that Capullo has his own brand on the paper. I wanted to show how the book lays over with spread pages so you do have to hold it down because you do get some gutter loss right there and that's mainly due to the way that the book has a lot of glue aha uh -huh. here is one from the very first issue of batman spawn the 2022 one shot you can see here like you can't see his even if you hold it down you can't see the rest of his fingers uh, but it's that kind of minimal gutter loss that you're going to get through the book and that's just due to that binding right there but that's it that as they say is that if you're interested in purchasing this book don't forget to check out our sponsors if you're in europe and you're interested in buying these books definitely check out walt's comic shop in berlin germany they have the cheapest pre-order prices flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all eu countries emails answer within 24 hours waltzcomicshop.com and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this deluxe edition. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking it up, if you are okay with your original trade paperbacks, or the hardcover, the standard size hardcover that came out last year, and what you thought of the stories if you read all these. Which one out of the three is your favorite Spawn Batman crossover? And 
The big question is, what other image characters would you like to see cross over into the DC universe and team up? I mean, of course, it doesn't count if we have Wildstorm, right? And ever since the whole buyout, Wildstorm has become a part of the DC universe. But for me, I would love to see a character like Shadowhawk team up with somebody like Oliver Queen, Green Arrow. But anyway... If you have any questions, leave them down below. Smash that like button on the way out. Check out our Patreon and Spread Shop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, all of you stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.